Well, welcome everybody to our contemporary math lesson uh, on 12.9. Today we're going to be talking about something called a combination. Now, a combination in math is a distinct group of objects without regard to their arrangement. Basically, it's taking any group of objects and it doesn't matter what order they're in. They can be all jumbled up and that makes a combination. So we want to look now at, at the differences of some things that we've been talking about. First one is the counting principle. And we've gone over this for a little while. And basically you just multiply the ways that the experiments can be done in uh, that order. Now, with a counting principle, it may be used with or without repetition. And you want to use this when determining the number of different ways that two or more experiments can occur. And we also use this when there are specific placement requirements, such as the first digit must be a 0 or a 1. Now, what we're going to talk about is determining the number of ways of selecting R items from N items. And very important that repetition is not permitted with either a permutation or a combination. Okay, So we're choosing a specific amount of items out of uh, a total amount of items. So let's go ahead and highlight some of the differences between permutations and combinations. For a permutation, you use when order is important. But for a combination, you use when order is not important. Okay, so that is the major difference. So for example, in a permutation, ABC and BCA are different permutations. But in a combination, ABC and BCA are the same combination of three letters. Now, problem solved with the permutation formula can also be solved with the counting principle. And we have our formula here, NPR is N factorial over N minus R factorial. So when we look at combination, what makes a different combination? So ABC and ABD are two different combinations of three letters. So when we talk about combinations, now we use NCR. And this is going to be N factorial over R factorial times N minus R factorial. And really, what we can think about is we can take the number of permutations and divide that by R factorial. So really, all we have to do to find the number of combinations is take the number of permutations and then divide it by how many items we're choosing factorial. Okay, in example one, it says determine whether the situation represents a permutation or a combination problem. It says a group of five friends, Arlene, Inez, Judy, Dan, and Eunice are forming a club. The group will elect a president and a treasurer. In how many different ways can the president and treasurer be selected. The question you have to ask yourself is, is order important? Okay, well let's think about it. Here, they're choosing a president and a treasurer. So does it matter if somebody is selected as a president as opposed to a treasurer? Well, the answer is yes, because they're doing different jobs. So here I'm going to say yes, and the reason is we have distinct objects. Okay, now when you answer yes to this question if order is important, that's going to tell you that this is a permutation problem. And we would find this by solving 5p2, which you'll recall is just 5 times 4. Okay, And so there are 20 different ways that a president and a treasurer can be selected. Now in the next question, letter B, it says of the five individuals, uh, two will be attending a meeting together. How many different ways can they do so? So you want to ask yourself the same question. Is order important? Well, 
Okay. Well, notice here that the two individuals are just going to a meeting. So does it matter who gets picked first or who gets picked second to go to the meeting? No, it doesn't matter. And so this is a no. And here we have sort of like a generic type of object. Okay, they're going to the meeting. That's very generic, it's not specific. And so that makes this a combination. Okay, and it would be in the form 5C2 because there are five friends and two are going to the meeting. And to solve this, we would just go take the number of permutations, five times four, and then divide it by uh, the two factorial, so two times one. And so our final answer here would be 20 over 2, which is 10 different ways. All right, now let's get a sense of visualizing what it means with our permutations. So consider the set that has A, B, C, and D. We want to actually list out all the permutations and all the combinations of the set taken two at a time. So for permutations, it's going to be in the form 4P2 because we have four objects and we're taking two at a time. So let's go ahead and list all of these out. And I just start with the first letter and then I match it up with the second. And then I'll take the first letter, match it up with the third, so on and so forth. So those are all the ones that can begin with D. And then I move on to the second letter. And notice now I can put BA. And then I'll do BC and BD. And then I'll start with a C, and I can put CA, CB, and CD. And then I'll start with D, and I can go DA, DB, and DC. Okay, so for 4P2, we should get 12. And notice if we do 4P2, we get 4 times 3, which is 12. Okay, and notice we have all 12 objects there. Now, when we list the combinations, we can't put any of them that are duplicates. So order doesn't matter in a combination. So what I'm going to do to find the number of combinations is take all of these permutations right here and I'm actually going to get rid of any of the ones that don't count as a combination or as a different combination. So if I look here at AB and BA, those are really the same combination. So I'm going to get rid of any of the ones where the order is just switched. Okay, because remember, order is not important to a combination. So I'm going to keep AC, but I'm going to get rid of CA. I'm going to keep AD, but I'm going to get rid of DA. I'm going to keep BC, but CB is not a different combination. I'm going to keep BD, but DB is not a different combination. And I'll keep CD and get rid of DC. So here are my actual combinations. Okay, so you can see here that we get a total of six. Now let's use our formula to see if we can get that answer as well. So what it is, remember, it's gonna be four P2 over two factorial. Well, four P2 was four times three, and then two factorial is two times one, so we get 12 over 2, which is 6. And so that validates our answer there. Now, if you're still confused as to what a combination actually is, I like to think of combinations as combination plates. Okay? And you go to a restaurant, right? And if you order a combo number 1, Let's say that's a taco and enchilada. 
and rice and beans. Okay, so if we look at having a taco, an enchilada, a rice, and a beans, we can think of a combination as being the plate, and it's a really great example because let's say that they put our taco right here and our enchilada right here, it's a really big plate, our rice they put over here, and then our beans they put over here. Now as long as they're on the plate, we don't care necessarily where they are. So they could have taken our beans and put them right in the center. And they could have taken our enchilada and put it over here. They could have taken our rice over here and they could have put the taco okay, right over here. And notice it's still the same combination of food. So the order really didn't matter as long as it's present. And so we think about this thing as being a generic type of plate that everything goes on. All right, so let's move on to some other examples here. It says find the following number of combinations in the form NCR. So what NCR means is N factorial over R factorial times N minus R factorial. Or the easier way to think about it is the number of permutations, NPR, over R factorial. Okay, so let's give letter A a try, 7C4. So it's the number of combinations uh, of seven items taken four at a time. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to do 7P4 and we're going to divide it by 4 factorial. Okay, so 7P4 says start at 7 and go out 4. So 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 and then divide that by 4 factorial which is 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Now when you're simplifying these a lot of times it's very easy, so here's a 4 is gone, and then the 3 and the 2 cancel out a 6, and so I'm really left with 7 times 5, which is 35. Okay, let's try some more here. 9C3, well that's going to be 9P3 over 3 factorial, which is 9 times 8 times 7 over 3 times 2 times 1. Okay, some of them are a little bit harder, and they don't necessarily cancel. Well, the 2 and the 8 would cancel to a 4, uh, and the 3 and the 9 would cancel to a 3. So we have 3 times 4 times 7. So 12 times 7 is 84. Don't worry about it. If you don't like the idea of canceling and you feel like you're going to make a mistake, just put this in your calculator, just like so, and you can still get 84. All right, so 10C5. If we just think quickly about how to do this, it's going to be 10, and then we want to go out 5. So 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. There's our five numbers. And then we want to divide it by 5 factorial. So 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. So one thing you'll notice is the number of digits in the numerator is going to equal the number of digits in the denominator always. OK? And now we can go ahead and cancel here. So our 3 and our 2 cancel the 6. Now the 4 and the 8 will cancel here and leave a 2. And then the 5 and the 10 will cancel. And that will also leave a 2. And so we're left with 2 times 9 times 2 times 7, which is 252. Okay, so that is how you find combinations in the form NCR. Let's go ahead and move on to our next example. It says eight colleagues staying at the same hotel want to go to a restaurant that is not within walking distance. Only one cart that seats five is available. Assuming that any of the eight can drive the car, determine the number of different groups of people that can ride in the car. Okay, so when we look at this, we have our little golf cart here. I don't know what a golf cart looks like. Something like this. Now, we have to determine, is this a combination or a permutation? And we ask ourselves, does order matter? Well, there was some information in here. It says any of the eight can drive the car. 
So when we think about this situation, it's very similar to the combination plate, right? So we just have to make sure that we have five people in here. Okay, maybe you have one stand, sitting off the back. Okay, and they all just need to be in the cart. So this is a very generic situation. So order does not matter, meaning this is a combination. And to set up our problem then, we have eight total friends, and we are taking five of them on the cart. So this would be solved by 8C5. Okay, and so this is just going to be 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, all multiplied together, divided by 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And let's go ahead and cancel here. So 3 and 2 and our 6, our 4 and our 4, the 5 and the 5, we're left with 8 times 7, which is 56. Okay, let's move on. It says, an exam consists of 6 questions. Any 4 may be selected for answering. In how many ways can this selection be made? So again, what do you ask yourself? Does order matter. Okay, so you have to think to yourself, does it matter if I answer question two and then I answer question four? Does the order matter? Well, no, it doesn't. And so this is going to be a combination problem. And we're going to set this up. Let's see, we have six questions and we're answering four of them. So it's going to be six C four. So notice the larger number, the total, is always going to be here, and then how many you're choosing is always going to be here. Okay, so to solve this one, we're going to take 6 times 5 times 4 times 3, and divide it by 4 factorial, which is 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Okay, so the 3 and the 2 cancel out with the 6, and the 4 cancels out with the 4, and we're left with 5 times 3, which is 15 ways you can make this selection. All right, let's move on. Question six, this is one of my favorite of all time. I love Chinese food, and one of the reasons is you can have so many different choices when you go and, and you order a certain combination. So here at Su Wang's restaurant, a dinner for eight consists of three items from column A, four items from column B, and three items from column C. If columns A, B, and C have five, seven, and six items respectively, how many different dinner combinations are possible? Okay, so let's just say that this is our uh, possible menu here. All right, so here's a closer look at the menu from Su Wang's Chinese restaurant. You can see here in column A that we do have the five items and that we are choosing three of them. In column B, we have seven items, and we're getting to choose four. And in column C, we have six items, and we get to choose three of those. So you can play around with this and make your own meal if you're feeling hungry. Uh, but let's talk about the problem. We want to know how many different dinner combinations are possible. Well, let's take each column separately. In column A, here, we get to choose three out of a total of 5. And so this is going to be represented by 5C3. So we're going to do 5 times 4 times 3 over 3 times 2 times 1. And we can see here we're going to get 5 times 2 or 10. Okay, So this has a possibility of 10 combinations. For column B, now we have 7, and we get to choose 4. So it's going to be 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 over 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And we'll cancel out here. And 7 times 5, and we get 35. So there are 35 combinations that we can make out of column B. Now in column C, we have six items, and we get to choose three of them. So that is 6C3. So it's 6 times 5 times 4 
over 3 times 2 times 1. And the 3 and the 2 cancel, so we have 5 times 4, we have 20 combinations. Okay, now this is where this problem becomes interesting because it's a combination of the fundamental counting principle as well as combinations. So if we're choosing, and we have 10 combinations in column A, 35 in column B, and 20 in column C, but we're doing each one of these events, we're basically just going to multiply all these together. And so we're going to get 10 times 35 times 20, because each combination can be matched up with every other combination. And that gives me a total of 7,000 different ways that I can order a dinner for eight. That's a lot of differences. All right, so that's how we determine uh, the difference between a permutation and a combination, and then how to set them up for a problem. And we can even see how the fundamental counting principle can still apply with our combinations here.